Hi there. Happy Sunday, everyone. Welcome to Spoken by Abby. And I am yours truly, Abina. As usual, I have a word, an inspired word for you this Sunday. So just encourage your hearts going into this new week. Thank God that he brought us through last week and he's bringing us through this week and also now um this week what i be i will be sharing is the topic the weight of sin now this topic it will not be a topic that you know is very popular and you know many of us might may not want to hear about this topic but i was inspired to just share something about it to remind us that um, we must put aside sin and live a life of righteousness and as usual I know you know a couple of videos I have been sharing any poetry but this week I'm back with that trend and the name of this poetry um, that was written a while back but it matches perfectly with what I am going to share so I am just going to, you know, read it and share it. And I really hope that it will impact someone today as you listen to my video. So narrow way. Walking in our own way. Making flesh the master. Practicing anger and strife. Then inviting perverseness to stay. Our foolish hearts leading us astray. Our lips never uttering words of wisdom. Correction despised. Oh, what an abomination. Never satisfied. The lips feeds on foolishness. The lips are not trees of life. And all that is done is bragging and boasting. The broad way, the road most traveled. Hell and destruction paves the way. Oh, the scorner in young women, young men, and also the elderly. Will you always hate reproof? And choose death. Can you tame that tongue? Let's just fear God and get knowledge and life in abundance. If grace abound, make room in your heart to receive. Let he that had an ear to hear hear, hear, and take heed. So that was narrow way. So basically the storyline of this poetry is basically talking about people, you know, practicing sin, which in itself is, you know, it includes anger, strife, and sin is basically us allowing the flesh to be master of us instead of us taking control of the flesh um our lips it doesn't utter words of wisdom it doesn't edify just perverseness come out of it foolishness it's not a tree of life and in doing this the poetry is saying it leads to the broad way which many people will travel on down to destruction down to hell and the last part of the poetry is just plain to everyone young women young men the elderly in general will you not take reproof will you not hear the word of the lord will not you follow your conscience and choose life instead of death can you tame your tongue it says and i am imploring you or the poetry is imploring you or us to fear god 
the fear of God is beginning of knowledge and wisdom and with knowledge and wisdom in fearing God we will have life abundance that is the promise to us if we do righteousness and we want to ensure that when we hear the word of God it does not we do, do not allow it to fall on stony ground or you know according to that Bible story the different type of ground that does not allow us to bear fruit of righteousness so that is what this poetry is about narrow way and what I am going to talk about the weight of sin so in today's current society if you notice um, if you're observing, even even if you're a backslider, even if you're someone who has never given your, your life to Jesus Christ, you will notice that things that, if you read the Bible, it is considered righteousness. The world takes that as being um, just fanatics. They take persons who um, do good, you know, as fanatics and jeer them and ridicule them and... The basis of this is because of their heart. Their heart is not right. They are not fearing God, and so they don't have the knowledge, the the, the knowledge of righteousness and to do good. They don't have the unction, you know, and the 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 push and the drive to do good. Because if you have the spirit of God with you, if you fear God, you want to please Him. For example, if you are a, a child and God forbid you fear, you're not supposed to fear your parents or anything, but let's just say you fear the consequence of um, what will happen if you disobey your parents. You will take um, a second look at what you're intending to do and then when you consider that the consequence is not, they are not worth it, you will refrain from doing that. And so the world have neglected this conscience in trying to please God and they rather please themselves. So I have a few, you know, pointers here that I want everyone, including myself, to take away on this video today. So, you know, sin is a weight, as I said, it can be a weight and it, it can hold us as prisoners. Uh, one scripture says that would be Galatians 5 9 it says a little leaven leaving it or leavens the whole lump in this context it basically mean you know for persons who um, are cooks or you know know how to, to bake in the context it's it could say too much yeast will make a whole loaf of bread rise too much and you if you bake you will not want that because it is not going to be a very good end product and so the same you can compare to the the walk of a christian no um if myself as a christian entertain thoughts or do actions that allow you know sin to come into my life it's basically going to contaminate me and i am not going to be righteous anymore even the slightest sin, let's say they call it white lie, you know, some persons consider a little lie, you know, nothing, nothing wrong with a little lie. I can always go, you know, and repent to God and, you know, he will forgive me. But there is such a danger in that whereby, you know, you think that um, this time you can repent, okay. That's okay the one time you do it, but then you go back and do it again and again and again and you keep repenting and you don't have any remorse. Eventually your heart will be hardened and then, you know, you will return to your sinful state. You're not going to be no longer living in righteousness as God requires. Another scripture speaks to, you know, uh, the dog returning to its vomit or even the pig. You know, the owner, let's say you own a pig and um, you, we know how messy a pig can get and you clean him up and then the next second he's gone back into that muddy wallow which you know makes him comfortable because that's what he's used to so when we are not saved we are used to sin and then when we come into jesus christ now we are washed but if we allow you know a little 
a little lie, a little idle jesting to come into our life, then, you know, it can turn our righteousness upside down. Um, one Another point I want to say, you know, specifically to the unsaved people, you know, if you're not usually if you don't have an encounter with God, you know, unsaved persons, they don't think anything of their sin. They don't think it's a way because they have been living and they're so blind to it. You know, unless God open up their eyes, take the scales from their eyes, they're not going to realize, you know what? This is sin. I shouldn't be doing it. Even though at the beginning, you know, their conscience might be telling them something. You know, they have smeared, their conscience has been smeared with hot iron. So you see, they keep living as the world agrees with what they're doing um, on a daily basis. No one is rebuking them. The Lord is not, you know, speedy to execute judgment on us because truth be told, if god were to truly truly execute judgment speedily everyone would no one will be left no one would enter into heaven it's only because of his grace and mercy and so you know for the unsaved it's not really a wait at the moment unless god is really calling them and you know with this being said i just want to remind you that judgment is pending if you're listening to this, I'm very glad because I want to tell you that judgment is pending and all of us will answer to our sins with our, uh, sins, and we'll also answer for our goods, our good, our righteousness. So it is better for us to, you know, answer for um, the good that we do and follow on to righteousness. So all of us, we need to all overcome sin which is enveloped in the loss of the eyes, what you see and your desire, what is not yours, maybe envy and jealousy and so forth, lust, lust of the eyes, you know, you see a man, you see a woman, you want them and you imagine things about them, you know, see something in, this, in, in your neighbor's house and you like it and you know you can't have it, but you just want it nonetheless. Stuff like that, things that seem so small, like that, the pride of life. Oh, I'm a professional. I'm in this job. Do you know who I am? Stuff like that. Um, the people of the world, unsaved, they go along doing that and they don't even realize that it is destroying their, 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 their you know, soul. It is leading down to hell. I just want to also implore saints of God, persons who have pursued righteousness, to continue to do so until perfection because as long as we live as children of God we also need to perfect go on to perfection the scripture said and no longer drink milk but eat some spiritual food and be strong and grow from this test to that test go higher a higher level with God and of course we cannot do it without the help of the Holy Spirit so we are to Pray fast, do whatever we can to stay in connection with the Holy Spirit so that we will not be weighted down by sin. And, you know, lastly, I just want to say, um, if you have fallen, this very moment, if you are in your fallen state, as long as there's life, there's hope, there's a way, and God will have mercy. So come back to Jesus and enter into his rest. Yes, sometimes um, when we sin, it, 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 it makes us so burdened down and we can feel it. Even myself, sometimes when I do, you know, what we consider the little wrongs and so forth, I have to repent and go back to God and say, God, what have I done? It feels, it makes you feel so empty, out of place. And so we need to get back to the Father and um, ask him to wash us. Of our sins and show them the sea of forgetfulness and then we go on to perfect righteousness and I also want to remind us that there's a heaven and a, a hell and 
it's so ex exhilarating to do righteousness and do good when you've overcome your tests it does feel good and it doesn't worth it to gain this world my unsafe friends it's not worth it to to gain um a world that is going to be falling anyways so why not choose heaven today if you're listening and you're not saved choose heaven choose righteousness forsake your sin it's not worth it why not be happy yes being a christian a child of god comes with its struggles but better go through that struggles than go through the sinful uh, struggles because you you are practicing sin outright and allowing the devil to control you so that is you know my word of encouragement for this week week don't let sin weigh you weigh you down come out of sin and go into righteousness so if you know you are touched this evening by this word of encouragement bring you through the the week i leave the scriptures in the description and you know just meditate on the word of god you know um what it says to be righteous and how to um be righteous meditate on the word of god and seek the the face of the lord so i'm asking you to also support this ministry by sharing like subscribe so that i can come to you with more inspiration more poetry and new things i promise new things god's willing for the new year god bless you and have a lovely weekend everyone take care